Hi, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ramon Tanasebi. I am a consultant hand surgeon at King's College Hospital in London, and I'm delighted to be a part of this event today. Uh, today, I'd like to talk to you about how to uh, avoid some complications when uh, undertaking uh, UCL ligament repair or even reconstruction in the thumb. Um, the two main things that I'd like to talk to you about are stiffness and laxity. We know that stiffness can be um, disappointing from the patient's perspective, uh, especially if they were younger and they were expecting to return to a high level of uh, function. But we also know that stiffness has an increased chance of re-rupture, especially in the athletic patient. So it's definitely a cause of revision surgery. Equally, laxity is very poor for function. It can be very painful, predisposed to degenerative change. And both of these things will ultimately lead to failure and then the requirement for revision surgery. So what can we do to try to influence this? Now, acute uh, patients in the acute setting, we will always try to uh, manage conservatively if we, if we can, but if we're intervening surgically, we will always try to undertake a direct repair. Obviously in the chronic setting, we'll think about doing a, a reconstruction, but many of our patients come to us at this awkward intermediate period, sometimes maybe four, sometimes even six weeks, where they sort of fall in between two stools. And I think this is where they are more likely to run into complications. We also have to consider what the aims of function are for the patient. Are they looking to return to a particular activity or a particular sport that places them at higher risk? And how can we avoid the risk of re-rupture for them? Uh, I will talk to you about elements of the surgical technique as we go along, but the time to mobilization is really key. So in an ideal world, we want to get these patients active and we want to get them moving as soon as we can to avoid some of these complications. It's worth mentioning that stability and stiffness are not the same thing. M many times we incorrectly, I feel, um, use these terms interchangeably and we I say, well, yes, of course, the joint is stiff, but at least it's stable. But I'm not necessarily sure that that's protective against further injury. And also, I don't think that it's necessarily a good thing for function. We certainly wouldn't be saying that about an ACL reconstruction, for instance. So the aim really should be to achieve stability, but in the presence of a mobile and functional joint. So if you can get these things right, we can hopefully avoid some of the complications that uh, I think are the most significant with regard to failure. In terms of what we can do in, in our surgical technique, I use a, a curved dorsal incision. And the first thing that I do is expose the aponeurosis and make a, a mark along the aponeurosis just at that point, uh, just inferior to uh, the extensor appar apparatus. Now, I think that taking care to mobilize this aponeurosis and then repair it at the end is actually a good thing to do in terms of maintaining tissue planes and also for um, increasing the stability of the final repair because the adductor will uh, definitely contribute to that. So when the adductor is then exposed and elevated, the joint is very clearly seen underneath. And in this particular case, we can see that there has been a distal detachment of the UCL, a capsular defect you can see all the way through into the joint. At this stage, we have to decide whether or not a direct repair is possible. And of course, the earlier or the fresher the injury, the more likely it is that the <clears throat> uh, UCL will stretch. Then the um, base of the proximal phalanx is exposed. And the next step is quite often to take a, an anchor in a standard way, whichever anchor you use, and to, to undertake that repair. But the next tip really is to consider using an augment. Here we can see <clears throat> that the uh, ideal position of the site of anchor insertion will be to mimic the anatomic situation. The obliquity of the fibers of the UCL can be um, <clears throat> recreated by placing an anchor quite close to the joint on the volar side. Um, we can also consider using a synthetic augment and placing that in the same position. So that will add strength to the repair it will maintain a fixed length that won't stretch with time. It could well share the load and can be protective against re-injury. It might give us some increased confidence, especially in the uh, athlete who's looking to return to sport earlier rather than later. But what do we do if we can't get that uh, torn or ruptured ligament to stretch all the way across? Do we undertake a stretch and the best that we can under those circumstances? Well, I personally feel that at that stage, especially in those intermediate
patients where you can't get the ligament to stretch all the way across, that a good reconstruction is better than a bad repair. So I would have counseled the patient for the necessity or potential necessity for a reconstruction. I harvest palmaris through stab incisions in the usual way and take it out through sequential stabs. I then size it and here is the augment that I use. It's called internal brace from Arthrex. A whip stitch goes in and then I use a distal first technique which allows for better tensioning. A guide wire goes in and a hole is drilled. If you fix the proximal side first, the distal anchor as it goes in will actually deform the joint in the direction that you want to avoid. You're providing a vector which is deforming. However, if you do it the other way around, fix it distally first, then tension it proximally, you will actually be correcting the position of the joint. You do have to be careful because your original anchor for repair was seated in an anatomic position. Now you have to use a much bigger hole and you, it's very, very difficult to place that really volar and really close to the joint surface. There's going to be a real risk that you blow it out with a larger biotinodesis screw or a fixation device. And therefore, your reconstruction is not going to be anatomic like the ACL is in terms of its position. Make sure that the holes that you have drilled are really well washed out. I use a swivel lock knotless anchor to secure the graft distally first make the um, second hole after excising the remnant ligament and then tension it when the joint is flexed. And I think that's a really important point. Don't try to um, reconstruct this with the joint and extension because otherwise the length or the working unit will be much shorter. And I think the 40, uh, sorry, 30 to 45 degrees is the uh, ideal um, uh, flexion uh, uh, to, to try to achieve when you're reinserting that second anchor. Then that second um, aponeurotic closure will also help with stability. And I think that uh, you, you can see here that there's immediate stability really, and a good range of movement after a reconstruction. And the confidence that you can get from this will enable you to uh, mobilize the uh, patient and the joint much more early than you perhaps would with a uh, primary direct repair. So in summary, um, stiffness and laxity can both lead to failure. Stiffness and stability are not the same thing. And I feel that a good reconstruction is better than a bad repair. And if you aim to mobilize them early, you will hopefully achieve the sweet spot in terms of overall function. Thank you very much for listening.